2 Kings 6, 1-23 Devotional Focus Verse And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? 2 Kings 6, 15 a missionary in Mongolia named James Gilmore had first aid knowledge but was not a doctor. One day, a wounded soldier with a thigh bone that was badly broken was brought to him for treatment. Mr. Gilmore did not know how to set the bone, and there were no doctors or books available. It might have been easy for him to cry, Alas, how shall we do? But instead, he prayed and asked God for help. While Mr. Gilmore was dealing with this patient, a group of beggars arrived requesting money. He quickly gave them a little gift and some spiritual exhortation, and all but one of the group left. The man who stayed was so underfed that he was nearly a skeleton. Suddenly, Mr. Gilmore recognized him as the answer to his prayer because he was a living illustration of anatomy. He asked the beggar for permission to examine him, traced the man's femur bone with his fingers, and then set the soldier's fracture. Miraculously, God had solved the dilemma. In today's text, when Elisha's servant saw they were surrounded by the enemy army, he thought they were in an impossible predicament. Yet, by faith, the prophet saw that God is greater than any situation and that he was in control and would help them. Today, while we may not face the need to set a fracture or be delivered from an army, we all experience circumstances that can cause us to think, alas, what can we do? Perhaps we have a rebellious teenager, a terminal illness, a financial crisis, or a leaky roof. Whatever our situation, we can remember the point of this account. God is at work for his people in ways that we cannot always see. He knows where we are and what we are facing, and he has the power to bring us through and be glorified in our lives. If you have an alas circumstance in your life, why not look to the Lord and see how he will undertake for you? Background Information the first six verses of the text tell of the acts which floated. One of the communities of the sons of the prophets under Elisha's leadership had outgrown their facilities. The place was too straight, too small for them, so they undertook a building project. This was probably the school at Jericho because they went to the Jordan River for the wood. When God miraculously caused the borrowed axe to float, it illustrated that he, and also Elisha, cared about these students. Baal worship was prevalent, and this miracle would have helped reassure the young men that God was with them. Verses 8 through 23 show God's miraculous protection of Elisha and his servant. Syria, to Israel's northeast, regularly made guerrilla-type raids into Israel. Yet, God repeatedly thwarted Syria by revealing their plans to Elisha, who told Israel's king, Jehoram. Ben-Hadad, Syria's king, thought to capture Elisha and to send a large contingency of horses and chariots to surround Dothan at night. The situation was quite alarming to Elisha's servant until God opened his eyes. In the Hebrew language, the word translated blindness in verse 18 conveys the thought of loss or distortion of vision resulting in mental confusion and bewilderment. The same word was also used one other place in the Bible. Genesis 19.11, when the angels prevented the men of Sodom from assaulting them. Elisha led the army from Dothan to Israel's capital, Samaria, a distance of 11 or 12 miles to the south. Even though Israel's king was ungodly, he respected Elisha, calling him my father. And he humbly followed Elisha's instructions, giving the Syrians royal treatment and then sending them home. God's power was illustrated in various ways by this incident. Elisha's foreknowledge of Syria's plans, the host of heaven that surrounded Elisha, 
the revelation to his servant of this fact, the blindness of the Syrian army, and the recovery of their sight. Conclusion When you face desperate times, keep confidence that God will see you through. Chapter 6 And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there, where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried, and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he shewed him the place. And he cut down a stick, and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put it on his hand, and took it. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel, and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God said unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him, and warned him of, and saved himself there, not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants, and said unto them, Will ye not shew me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king. But Elisha the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots, and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord, and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom ye seek. But he led them to Samaria. And it came to pass, when they were come into Samaria, that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men, that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw. And behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha, when he saw them, My father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow? Set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink, and go to their master. And he prepared great provision for them, and when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away, and they went to their master. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel.